you get started, you'll need a cordless drill, a level, hacksaw, various Allen wrenches, a number 3 Phillips screwdriver, a 5 16 nut driver with an 8 to 10 inch driver extension, and a T30 Torx driver bit provided with the lift. Your pinnacle stair lift comes in four boxes. Check each to make sure nothing is damaged or missing. If there is a problem, report it to the shipping company and harm our summit right away. In the chassis box, you'll find the chassis, call sign controls, the battery charger, a manual hand crank, and the installation and owner's manual. The chair and footrests come in their own box. The chair attaches to a swivel post with the provided fasteners. The footrest comes with an adjustable seat height frame, cover, and five nylon plugs. The rail bracket box has two, four, or six sets of brackets depending on the length of the rail and the number of rail sections. Four wood screws per bracket are provided. The rail box contains the top and bottom rails with accessories. Each rail has the gear rack pre-installed. The bottom rail also has the bottom limit cam, charge strips, and end plate. Joint pins and brackets are provided with all two-piece rails. Accessories include the top limit cam and end plate, upper charge strips, compression bolts, self-cutting screws, a Torx T30 driver bit, and extra plastic gear rack. In most cases, the pinnacle comes from the factory with the rail custom cut to the correct length. If you have to cut the rail on site, refer to the instructions in the installation manual. Position the bottom rail with the end plate towards the bottom and the plastic rack facing down. You may need to place something heavy at the end of the rail to prevent it from sliding away from the stairs. Insert the two charger strips into the keyed slots at the top of the rail. And bend the red and black wire tabs inward. Next, push the charger wire through the inside of the rail with the connector coming out through the joint end. Position the top rail with the splice end towards the splice end of the bottom rail and the plastic rack facing down. Connect the charger harnesses between the two pieces of rail. Slide the top rail into the bottom rail, aligning the pre-installed pins. Gently tap the top rail if necessary. Be careful not to pinch the charger harness. Install the two bolts into the joint fastener and tighten with a 3 16 inch Allen wrench. Installing the rail brackets is a simple matter of snapping them into the rail channels. Be sure the brackets are installed with the screw side facing the wall. The brackets are tightened from one side only. For double rails, a bracket should be placed on the first step, one on each side of the splice, and one on the step closest to the landing. Turn the rail right side up. axle should be aligned with the nose of each step. Install the two bolts into the joint fastener and tighten with a 3 16 inch Allen wrench. Slide the gear rack downward to close any gap. The underside of the rail must be at least two inches above the stair tread nose to provide clearance for the footrest. Position the bottom bracket and lightly tighten the screws. For double rails, adjust the two center brackets to touch the stair tread, ensuring the total rail is straight and parallel to the stairs. Gently slide the chassis onto the rail with the red on-off switch facing down. Be careful not to pinch your fingers between the rail and the chassis. Remove the red safety tie and turn the switch to the on position. Unit will emit two short beeps. Use the installation switch to move the chassis about two feet down the rail. Using a level, align the four seat leveling bolts to a vertical position. Firmly tighten the two bolts on the back side. Loosen the remaining two bolts about a half an inch. Position the rail so the edges of the mounting brackets are clear of the outermost projection from the wall. 
things like doors, windows, and pictures, and the plumbness and squareness of the wall should be accounted for. The edge of the bracket is an indication of how far the back of the chassis and seat extends past the back edge of the rail. The back edge of the rail is generally one to one and a half inches off the wall or further substruction. Then install the remaining rack and cut off the excess with a hacksaw or chop saw so it is flush with the top end of the rail. Put plastic on the floor to catch cuttings or mark the rack and cut it outside. Install the top limit cam and tighten with a 5 64 inch Allen wrench. Install the end plate with four self-cutting torque screws. Apply grease to the threads and do not over tighten. Select the proper pre-compression screws and tighten with a 5 32nd inch Allen wrench. Use a half inch for tracks under 6 feet. Use 3 quarter inch for tracks between 6 and 12 feet. Use 1 inch for tracks over 12 feet. Plug in the battery charger at either end of the rail. Use electrical tape to secure the charger plug and jack. Turn off the red on off switch. Position the seat bracket footrest on the two leveling bolts. And then tighten securely. Check the height of the seat using the height guide behind the footrest shroud. You can also compare the height to that of an existing chair or walker with an armrest. If the seat height needs to be adjusted, remove the four bolts, slide it up or down, and replace and tighten the bolts. Then connect the footrest cable to the six pin connector on the chassis. Position the keyed seat swivel post in the hole in the seat base closest to the top of the stairs. Securely tighten two bolts using the 5 32nd inch Allen wrench. Use the white plastic plug supplied to secure the vertical footrest shroud and the main footrest cover plate. Position the seat assembly on the seat swivel post. Make sure the swivel lever is depressed so the seat is fully engaged. Check the swivel lever to test the locking mechanism. The system will not function if the proper engagement is not achieved. Connect the seat cable to the 8-pin connector on the chassis. With the 6-pin footrest and 8-pin chair cables connected to the chassis, the black installation switch on the chassis will be disabled. The armrest control can be changed from right to left hand positioning with ease. Simply undo a single screw, slide the armrest upward, and disconnect the plug. Switch positions, reconnect, retighten, and you're done. Ensure the key switch on the armrest control is in the locked position with the key in the vertical position. Turn on the red on and off switch. The LED indicator light should cycle through a test sequence showing red, yellow, and finally green. If any of the system controls or safety sensors are engaged, the LED will turn yellow or red. If the LED is not green, turn the unit off and recheck all wire plugs and safety sensors, then try again. Run the lift up and down using the control on the armrest. Test that the swivel, footrest, and chassis obstruction sensors are all functioning properly. Ride the lift to the top and double check the rack tension screw to ensure that it is tight. The remote call sign controls require an antenna to be installed on the chassis. And it's just a simple matter of pressing and holding the directional button of the remote. The lift will run with or without a rider. Now your Pinnacle Stairway Lift is ready to give you years of trouble-free service. Enjoy the ride.